So in the last video, we were talking about the idea of a conceptual definition, just meaning when we go to design our study, once we have our hypothesis in hand and we know what variables we're going to look at in our study, we have to give a clear definition of those variables. Tell the reader, tell other scientists, what is it we mean when we say something like intelligence? What characteristics set, in our view, set intelligence off from other variables? Um, maybe a, how are those characteristics related? And usually, by the way, that is not just your opinion, but you're backing that up with past research and with solid, logical, well-thought-out reasoning. Uh, even so, that doesn't mean that your definition is foolproof, but as long as you're being clear about it, people can at least decide for themselves whether they agree or disagree, they can take your work, they can revise your definition, they can build on it and refine it, and so on. Uh, once you have this conceptual definition, you've only just started because the next thing you have to think about is specifically how am I going to measure this thing? So I want to know if certain people in my study have higher or lower intelligence, how am I actually going to assess that? How am I actually going to put some kind of a number on it? That is a, is a huge task to decide what is the best way to do that or the best way f to answer the question that you are trying to answer. So this is not something where there's always one best way to measure something, but in your particular case with the kind of thing you want to know, what is a good way of measuring that that will give you the sort of information you need? So what we do when we're approaching this, we take our conceptual definition and we ask what measurable effect would this variable have on the world? Or in this case, it may have many different effects. So for example, uh, in, in our idea, our conceptual definition of intelligence that we've come up with here, and again, this isn't anything that is based on research. This is just for the sake of example. So this could be a totally incorrect view of what intelligence is. But just to go with our example, we've said that we consider uh, the ability to solve problems to be an important characteristic that is part of our definition of intelligence. What we're going to do is see in what way do we think this characteristic would have an actual impact, a measurable effect on the world? And of course, there's all kinds of ways in which it could have a measurable impact on the world. We could uh, bring people into our study and we could give them word problems. And by the way, this is, this is not even nearly as specific as we would need to get in discussing how we're going to measure this. So we're going to give them some word problems and see how well they do solving the word problems. Well, are the word problems uh, written down on paper or are they read to them out loud? Uh, are they, you know, what language are they in? What level of vocabulary do they use? All kinds of details uh, that we would need to consider and need to relate to, does this actually get at what we mean by intelligence? And, and the point behind all this is we're trying to find some way, uh, uh, some kind of effect that when we see that effect, that means we are detecting intelligence. We're detecting the variable that we're trying to measure. Um, uh, uh, word problems would be uh, one example. We could also uh, give the person some kind of a physical physical puzzle. And again, even that is being too general. We should really be specific in what we're what we're talking about, and we can measure how you know maybe the time that it takes them to solve uh, this particular type of physical puzzle is a good measure we've decided of their ability to solve problems, and we believe that is at least in part an indication of intelligence. When we are taking our conceptual definition and we're trying to see the effects that it would have on the world, the measurable effects it would have, this process, this is called operationalizing. Operationalizing. And the reason it's called that, it's kind of a confusing name, but it's called operationalizing because we are seeing what operations or procedures or techniques we can take 
to actually detect, to measure the variable that we're trying to study. And uh, a very common term that you'll see is the idea of, uh, I'll put it down here where I have a little more space, of an operational definition. And that's just the result of this operationalizing uh, task that we take, that we carry out. So we take our conceptual definition, we operationalize it in the sense of saying, what, what are the actual operations or procedures, techniques that we need to do to measure the effects that this variable has on the world? And that is our operational definition. In other words, another way of saying that is a, an operational definition. It is a definition of a variable, especially a construct where we can't see uh, directly measure all of the variable. We have to sort of direct, or we have to sort of indirectly measure it by seeing its effects on the world. But it's a definition of a variable in terms of how that variable will be measured. And that is the key word in this definition measurement. Operational definitions are all about measurement. We maybe would have been better off calling them measurement definitions, but the, again, the reason why we're calling them operational definitions is because uh, we are coming up with what operations, tasks can we carry out to take the measurement, to make the measurement of our variable. So just to be clear here, right, the idea is we've said here's our definition of intelligence. We think there's this thing out there. Uh, we can't directly measure it or we can't directly measure all of its characteristics. But we've come up with this construct. Uh, we, we've defined the construct by conceptually by, by listing different characteristics. And we have some idea of how those characteristics are related, how they're going to vary together. They're going to co-vary. Now we're going to move into the realm of trying to detect the effects they have on the world and quantify them, turn them into actual numbers. And that is what creating this operational definition is all about. And we'll go over some examples of operational definitions, but the idea is we're, we're trying to get very specific. So we're going to say things like, we measured intelligence by the amount of time in seconds that it took someone to solve this particular type of word problem. Uh, we're going to measure happiness. Uh, we'll give you our conceptual definition of happiness, but, but once we've done that, we're going to give the operational definition by saying something like, we uh, define happiness here as, as the number of times per minute that a person smiles. So we are we are taking our conceptual definition and we are transforming it or translating it into concrete terms of how we're actually going to go about measuring the thing. What techniques are we going to use? What operations are we going to use? And that is why we call it an operational definition.